Yeah, hello, and uh, welcome to another Lived Quality Conversation. Uh, and uh, today I have with me Adele. Adele uh, runs uh, a YouTube channel. She creates a lot of, uh, uh, you'd say, educational content around leadership, um, personal growth, and, uh, and a lot of other topics that she covers. Uh, yeah, she is a business person and is a parent and does many things. Uh, so um, I'm very excited to have this conversation and I'm looking forward to where it's going to lead. Uh, yeah, welcome Adele. Thank you, thank you Clarita. Nice talking to you this, uh, on my side it's the morning, so nice talking to you. Yeah, uh, so Adele, I've, I've been sort of like going through your channel and sort of trying to get a sense of, you know, the, the material you cover and it's yeah. it's very interesting stuff, it's very educational stuff. You, you touch a lot of subjects that I like, like your most recent one about uh, the growth mindset. Uh, it's, it's a very important thing to learn and to sort of uh, be practicing, uh, mm -hmm. you know, dealing with procrastination, uh, you know, all these important subjects, these are all uh, very key, you'd say, skills for people to cultivate. And the general theme sort of I'm picking uh, from, you know, the work that you're putting out, it, it seems to me like you, you have this emphasis on uh, cultivating uh, excellence and, um, you know, trying to see how you can improve continuously, right? There's, yeah, there was a segment yeah. where you spoke about how you try to like really manage your day and try not to let problems of this day fall into tomorrow. Like you try to try to finish this day, right? That, that was very, very interesting for me because I, I, I tried to do the same thing. Um, and uh, very many other aspects that you've covered where I feel like we're really aligned. So, um, yeah, so it, it's very, very refreshing to hear that, you know, someone is putting out creative content like that. Uh, personally, I find it challenging to, like, just speak to a camera and sort of, like, just look at a camera and just riff off of it. It's, uh, it, it's a bit daunting for me. So, so how I've decided to start my own journey is, like, just through talking to other people. I find that much, you'd say, easier for me to manage uh, than sort of like going off probably if I do it for some time I may eventually you know get to a place where I can <laughs> talk to a camera and sort of like just uh riff off of it um but yeah so I, I appreciate the work you're doing and I I know the challenge involved uh so that is some really good stuff you're doing out there so thank you for doing that and, and putting in that effort right thank you thank you I appreciate it so I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a story when I was growing up, around six years old, and my mom knew what I was capable of because as mothers, you get to understand, you see your child, what they do on a daily basis, and you actually get to understand what they are capable of. So she introduced me into a, a church setting of being able to sing in front of a pulpit, recite verses, at least five every Sabbath. Uh, and then uh, I had one Saturday or one Sabbath in the month where I had to preach. Preach for a congregation of about 50 plus people. Now, for her, her intention was not me to learn the Bible or to preach. Yes, that's part of it. But she wanted to build my confidence. Mm. Now, in doing that, she made me um, sort of aligned to what I wanted to do in life, sort of a purpose. But as you grow up, you become an adolescent and some things you don't want to associate with and you run away from it. And But the, the foundation does not go. The foundation that that person put in you for the last four or five years doesn't go. So my mom in her mind, she knew it that Adele was destined to be a speaker, to be able to, to, do, to, to impact lives, 
but I was running away from it for so long, actually, for mm. so long. So when I got into the working space, I started, you know, missing it because now this was every day you're running, you're doing that, you're doing the other. And I was doing something outside um, or outside something that makes like a passion, like like a calling. Mm. And and that required me to put in the work, you're doing worksheets, you're looking at budgets, you're, you know, all those things. And I wanted an outlet. So I remembered, like, listen, I have something I love doing. I love talking to people. I love speaking. I like impacting lives. So from my busy schedule, let me do what I love doing. So what is the quickest way of doing it? I said, let me put up a YouTube channel. And that's how it was born. So it was born as an outlet to just dump thoughts there and, and, and use my experience, use the what, the what I'm doing, because I'm a lawyer and I'm also an HR practitioner. So I thought, dump everything there. If you can impact one or two lives, perfect. Because we don't need a whole crowd. You just need one person to believe in what you do and to learn something from you. And then they'll tell other people and other people tell other people. Before you know it, you have a gathering. That's how churches work. They push to one person <laughs> and then they bring others on board. And before you know it, the congregation is big. So that's how the YouTube channel was born. And the focus being leadership, accountability and growth it was just uh, because that's where my expertise is. I've been a leader for the last 10 plus years. Um, growth, I love to be different every single day, even if it means reading one chapter or even if it means listening to one podcast, just mm -hmm. to be different from how I started my day, I will do it. Um, and about accountability, um, I, I like my, I saw my mother still. She's my benchmark for almost everything I do. <laughs> um, I saw her being accountable. She has a bookshelf that has everything she does. The workers in her plantation are written down and everything they do. Their age, where they come from. Like she's accountable. The money she spends every day, it is accounted for. Every single coin that goes out. So I learned that from also the beginning, the childhood. So I said, okay, if that's the how she runs her home and it is successful, it means we can put accountability as well as a, as a value in our lives. It can change worlds. It can change multitudes. So that's how I, I, I managed to, to coin my channel into leadership, growth, and accountability. And for me, those are values that if even myself, or even if my children or anyone's children or anyone's home implemented them, there would be a different home altogether and a different perspective mm. on life. So that is how that was born. <laughs> and mm. I'm glad that you're watching and it is impacting lives as well. So thank you for that. Wow, that's, that's wonderful. And it's really good that it's sort of like, you know, going in that direction. And maybe just to play yeah. you back, uh, what I'm hearing, it's like you've, um, you, 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 your mom did a great job, like really honing you into, uh, you know, cultivating your confidence through those challenges, of, you know, preaching in church and, and sort of like giving you this, um, she had like a boot camp of sorts <laughs> that she was running you through and, and yeah. sort of, and, and in the process, you you gain all this experience and along the way as you you know you know you've, you you've worked your way to developing all these uh professional capacities like you know being a lawyer and it takes a great it's it's like first of all like the academic journey to go through that is 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 a lot of work and i yeah. think all that uh confidence came in and then sort of like guided you through that and to a point whereby you started to, you know, you are filled with all this experience and, and uh, unlocked all these gifts within yourself that now you go to a place where you 
you sort of had to start emptying them out to create space for more <laughs> for more growth so that other yeah. gifts can come in and um and that's where sort of like one of the ways you've decided to do that has been like through setting up the 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 YouTube channel and um you know all of that feeding into your values uh especially things like accountability and and you know excellence and 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 the growth whereby these are your guiding principles for you to keep cultivating more of those gifts so you can always have more to give and and part of it i think when you're doing that you you know they say uh we we think that we think inside our heads but actually uh we when we speak to other people we actually even think better because our our thoughts are becoming more solidified and we can see them outside of our minds and then we can even refine them and shape them better and so wow it's uh, it's amazing like like you do all that and 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 so for me it reminds me of um it reminds me of something i was writing about because like, I, i had a, a conversation with a, a friend recently as well about the the same subject I, and i think it was about the pursuit of um it ended up being about the pursuit of uh purpose right and 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 you touched it a bit on there on that and um in w- when i was sort of like trying to edit that talk and uh, write up uh, i found that it it all kind of comes together through the 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 overcoming of obstacles along the way and as you overcoming them as you're learning that craft it's like you doing the 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 youtube channel you're learning you're focusing on the things that you want to learn more the competences you want to cultivate more so it's more like a, a learning experience and if somebody can witness it great if, if they don't that's their problem but this is mainly it's like you're doing it for you which 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 is really great because like even me having this conversation it's it's for my own uh learning um I I used to have a lot of them before which are not captured anywhere and I would I would I would reminisce like in the future I'd be like ah oh, yeah. I had such a great conversation this day with this such and such a person I wish I could go back and revisit it but I can't and now the things I took from it but then I feel like if I went back and revisited it maybe there's more I could take out but then I can't go back and so it's a bit of a it becomes a bit of a problem however uh you know with with channeling it into something like this uh it sort of now gives me a holding place for it it's like now i can revisit this conversation it's like yeah. in that conversation you said you have to be your first customer and i feel like you you're the same like you you're the first customer of the thing that you're making and yeah so and, what happens yeah. is that you become the first consumer because yeah. when you're changing lives you're changing yourself as well That's yeah. why people will say that if someone is not in a good place if you channel that energy in changing someone else's life in the process you change your own life because it doesn't mean you're perfect you just the energy you channel out is the same energy you will get to be better so with mm. this for me it's it is a purpose now it has become a purpose it has become a calling that i'm actually now investing in more money to take it to another level. So, mm. what I'm going to do or what I'm doing right now, I have uh, enrolled into a mentorship academy because now I want to learn from those who have used this and even done better because they say if you want to be good at your craft, you have to learn from those who have done it before, listen to their experiences, listen to how they managed to get there. and then before you know it you can actually surpass them because now you're learning from their experience mm. so i have decided to uh to sort of invest more time and understanding of what is this that i'm doing is it just dumping thoughts or i can actually impact even more people than i am doing right now so that mm. academy is to help me be able to one to align the purpose properly to to be able to 
to understand the audience I am going to. If you're mm -hmm. saying you're going to do leadership, uh, personal growth or professional growth and accountability, who are you targeting? You're targeting executives. You're tar targeting one-on-one -on -one individuals. So you can actually monetize your talent. And this is where it is getting to be that if you invest so much time in yourself, in learning and being better, and which is what we want for our new generation that we are raising right now, to understand that having a skill can actually make you money if you put in the effort. And instead of just dumping everything on YouTube, yes, which is a good channel, how about take it to a bigger scale, become an, a global speaker with time, become a global an, um, enthusiast and impact lives more than you are doing in your small channel because there are so many people who are not going to watch the YouTube channel. Very many uh, who are looking for different content. But if you're in people's faces, if you're standing in front of a thousand people, if you're standing in front of a hundred people, you're going to change more lives than you are doing on your YouTube channel. So my thought process is this is a calling that my mother showed me, but I was been ignoring. So with a little bit more push, a little bit more of investment. I think getting into our stages, being hired by different organizations to come in and impact lives, to change perspective of different employees, because now you have the expertise in terms of what you have been doing before and what you're doing right now. Yeah, so yeah. You start looking at a bigger picture because every day when you do something, it opens your mind on the possibilities of what that could be. So now my mind is thinking, that I need to get on a bigger platform. I need to get on a bigger journey than I am doing right now. So I'm deliberately investing in that with time, with research, with um, visiting and meeting people who have done it before, uh, just understand the perspective of it. And I believe that um, with much focus, it can be bigger, um, it can be um, more than I actually think. So that's the journey that I want to show people what they are capable of. And I think I can do that by becoming on, or going on a bigger platform. Oh, yes, I, I completely, you know, resonate with that because you find the best way, like they say, uh, to teach something is to, to embody it. It's like you, you embody it, you, you, you demonstrate uh, the thing by being that thing. And, and we've seen a lot of these examples. Like if you're a Christian, you would see that in the example of Jesus. It's like, you know, Jesus is, is God and he becomes a man so that he can come down to earth with us, like literally come down to earth and <laughs> demonstrate uh, how to live, uh, you'd say, a life of virtue. And, 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 you know, like if we were whining about it, it's like, oh, life is so hard, the weather, all these things. Uh, he goes like, yeah, yeah, look, I showed up. I have lived where you have lived. We've done this. And it's, um, it's not as bad as you're saying it is. And it's actually manageable. And interestingly, like when he starts out his movement, uh, you know, whenever he started, uh, th there's a very interesting fact that at the time, the people he was trying to reach out to were, were the outcasts. Like, the people in the city uh, were okay. Like, these guys are fine. They, they were living good lives. They, they are living above par, right? So what does he do? He goes to the people who are actually struggling uh, because that struggle that is crushing you is always showing that, you know, you have opportunity to fine tune uh, the way you're engaging with your reality. And so what did he do? He went there to them, participated with them, uh, lived with them, did exactly what they were doing. And in the process, uh, when they were seeing him in their situation, uh, the way he was carrying himself, uh, the, it rubbed off of them. They went like, oh, wait, actually, I don't actually have to struggle this way. If I, if I can just copy what this guy is doing, uh, maybe it could influence me. And they did, and it worked. And they were like, 
smidgen like yeah I, i'm not leaving the side of this guy i'm just gonna keep following where he's going because uh, he's doing some cool stuff right and and so just his movement grows and and now we're christians <laughs> but leaving that aside for a minute um i think that that way and there's a lot of research that shows that this is this is the the, the you'd say the most practical way like if you look at how children learn uh you if, as a parent you you start to notice within your children like they're they're picking up on habits that you don't like and and you notice them because you have those habits and you don't like them about yourself so you you can start to pick up on them when they're picking up and and they they are not wanting to pick it because for them they're taking everything from you because now the sort of like imprinted on you they just want to become like you everything sure. good bad whatever and so <laughs> and so they you start to get uh you'd say because you're sensitive to those other uh habits that you don't like which you do so you can see them in them and then you want to manage that and so you have to start managing dealing with that um and and on the other hand uh, uh the thing you touched upon there like sharing your your journey of how where you are and where you're taking it like you know now you you're trying to get into get more training and sort of like develop these skills better it, that reminded me of um there's a guy i i follow uh John Vaveki he's a he's a Canadian professor and he's done this work uh about meaning and uh and and wisdom right and he says yeah i he popularizes um what he calls the four p's uh four, four ways of knowing and mm-hmm. uh he he talks to them a lot and he says it, it's sort of like a good model for you to learn anything to its depth right and it's very similar to what you're doing so, so to use an example of maybe like um how can i say like uh making a certain dish let's say you making bread like let's say you like bread it's not a good example but that's what i can think of right now so let's say you like making bread right and so you go into a bookshop you buy a recipe book about bread and you read about how to make bread you read the history of bread like you understand the concept of what bread is so he calls that getting like a a propositional knowledge it's like somebody somebody packaged this into a proposal and made it available so that is just knowledge you can know like you're getting the facts about bread okay and then he says you can take those facts and then um uh, you know like take the recipe and then learn how to make bread right like knowing about bread and the facts about bread and making bread are two different ways of knowing bread right it's like yeah uh, he he calls it cultivating uh the second one is procedural knowledge it's like you have to cultivate the procedure of make of, of implementing the knowledge that you got so so yes. now you know it in two ways like you know the the facts and you know the practice of making bread but then he says there is more to that it's like then you could now start once you've made en- enough bread it's like you know a few different ways of making bread uh you've made it yourself so when you go and meet other people who make bread and they talk about making bread you guys have a shared perspective so you can now talk from your perspective of experience of knowing how to make bread and you know what you guys you can advise someone about something you don't know all the ways to make bread but you know something and you can add to their understanding of bread so you, you you can have a shared perspective which you call yes. uh perspective of knowing and then he goes like you can deepen it further to the fourth one which he calls uh participatory knowing so it's like you go from knowing the facts knowing how to make the bread which is the 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 procedure no uh, uh, developing the perspective and then now he calls it the participatory so you start participating in bread making communities like you you start a a bread making community you guys get together you start to extend the concept of bread it's like what are the materials we're making bread from yes uh what other materials can we use like how can we reinvent bread making and the th- the idea of bread and so it's like when you get to that level you have you have known something to its depth of knowing it it's like it's so embodied in you you live bread it's like when somebody uh talks to you about bread it's like 
they are touching your life. <laughs> it's like this yes. is not something you just know about. It's like you, you live it. It's like no, no, bread is a very important thing in my life. Like I know bread. I I live bread. It's like when I look at bread, it's like a whole new world comes alive for me because I'm seeing through bread making and and yes. things which you may take trivially are not as trivial as you think they are. Like every yes. little detail is important. Yeah. So. I think you're you're sort of doing that with with uh with with your journey. True. Uh, uh, Very true. Yeah. And I'm on just stage two, because I know what I want to do. I know I can speak. I know I can impact lives. Yes. Now I'm on the. I know that. Now you go to the part to the stage where you have now to invest to understand it deeper. You know, because now you want to learn more, um, engage more beyond the knowing you want to practice the making of the bread you know you want yeah that stage of practice and the more you practice the more you do it the more it becomes embodied in you then now you can get to the third stage and if you skip any stage you will lose out on the last stage because now you don't have the enough knowledge to be able to make that community to be able to think beyond to reinvent to start thinking outside the box because you missed a stage so that's why in my engagements and in my discussions with people, say, always invest in yourself. Don't, if you have a minute on you to invest in you, please do it. Because that investment, five, four years from now, it's going to be immense and it looks small. And now, for example, in the economy we are in right now, having a skill outside your education is paramount, paramount, because the job sector is closing. People are now using machines and computers to do several things that we used to do before. So how are we going to survive? You will survive on your talent and your new skill. So what you do, you use your education. For example, me holding a master's in law and a master's in human resource will not be enough in the near future. Are you going to study all the masters in the world? No. Are you going to be a doctor and doctor and doctor? No. Because there is a time for everything and there's a limit to certain things, for at least for most individuals. So if you have that education, thank God, but how are you going to use that education how are you going to use those qualifications to accelerate the things that you love doing, to impact the things you love doing? That is your skill and your talent. But first, mm. you have to identify it. You have to identify what you love doing. So I'll give an example. If I am doing, uh, I love speaking and say I want to be a life and leadership coach. There is no leader in this world that has no life. <laughs> So we start with life. It means that everything you're doing, whatever engagement you're making, must be relating the facts to life. So every leader has a family. How are they managing their family life with leadership in their professional life? You have to speak to someone to understand that what they're going through. You have to solve a problem. Now you have identified you're good at that. You're good when you're talking to people. When I'm talking to Clayton, he's able to listen, to understand, to be immersed in the conversation. It means I am changing a life. I am transforming a life. Now, once you understand that that is your skill, that is your talent, now you must invest in it, in learning it better. Join different academies. Join different leadership institutions. Join speaking engagements uh, where they are teaching public speaking and speech writing. All those things must be on your resume. So that you become an authority, you become authoritative, in, I mean, authentic in terms of what you do. You don't have to think, oh, what am I going to add here? What am I going to do? No. If I want to change people culture in workplaces, I have to invest in that knowledge. Because understanding people and managing people is different. And if you do it over and over with that knowledge and then the practice that you put into making sure that knowledge is valuable to you and people around you will help you get into the third stage you mentioned. Hmm. 
And then after that, you can build a community because now that community will know, oh, Adele is this. Because I've seen your journey all from step one of making bread, the last step is a journey. And that journey is visible. You cannot hide it. Yeah. You cannot hide it. It is visible. People are seeing it. And that journey is not a one, a one two months journey. It's a long process. And that's why our generation right now, we, we like quick things. And that's why they disappear so fast. Because we don't like the waiting. We don't like the waiting. Yet, if you talk to every successful transformational person, they have waited. They have invested. They have taken time to master the art. And then they have monetized it to make money to be as successful as they are. But it didn't come from the blue. No. They invested, no, it took the time, learned, and all that it can 10 years, 15 years, and then they are successful. But our generation, we want to wake up at 25. You want the things of a 40 year old person. You don't know how much time they have put in to get to that level. They have taken time. So that process, the four stages you mentioned are paramount if we are going to achieve our goals in this generation. And I want to be a part of that change. I want to be a part of that transformation by sharing myself, sharing my knowledge, and putting myself out there. So by the time I am 45, which is about 10 years from now, plus, I would be to be able to look back and say, I went through all the four stages, and I'm an authority in the community about public speaking and engagement, about leadership, growth, and accountability, about changing human resource to understand their roles in their professional life about so many things because you have invested knowledge you have invested time and now you can say i'm ready to monetize it and make money out of it as a living why uh, and lately i've been thinking a lot about um, this thing we call retirement why um when you said having these conversations to speak from the heart on what is happening around us, that's what has been on my mind a lot. Because as you grow, you get into the less risk age where you have to start thinking beyond where you are right now and start thinking 20 years from now, where am I going to be? It is most likely, Clayton, that where you are right now, as active as you are right now, you will not be that active at 60. Impossible. <laughs> so, when that is the case, what are we going to do? That the decisions we make right now, whatever we invest in right now, has to inform what we want to achieve 20 years from now. Because at 20 years from now, we will not be running around doing the things we're doing right now. Because there's a new generation coming up that will be doing those things. And most likely you'll be a liability at that stage. To most organizations, <laughs> to most spaces, you'll be a liability. So you being a lawyer, yes, with your all qualifications, might not work for you at 60 years old. If that is the case, then investing in your skill, in your talent, in yourself right now is paramount because that cannot be taken away from you. Job security is an illusion in this economy we're in and in this business we are in. But investing in your talent, investing in your skill will take you miles because you'll go to the grave with that skill. No mm -hmm. one can take it away from you. You can actually build an empire around you in that old age, you still have these young people working for you to build that empire because you are the business. Your skill is the business. No one can fire you. So that is the journey. I am starting. I'm not even 1%. I am just starting right now because I've gotten a, real, a realization right now that, look, I'm growing old. And 20 years from now, where will I be? And I have children who are young. And in 20 years' time, they will still be depending on you. 
So if the economy and the recession are changing the dynamics of the life, how prepared are we going to be? That's how this talent, I, I, I called mom and I said, I think I have something you put in me. It's time to bring it to life. Because this cannot be taken away from me. But a job will be taken away in a space of an eye. So that is the, the journey I am starting. And I want to bring on so many people with me so that we can grow together. And how to do that is by putting myself out there. Because just like you said, as you're changing someone's life, you're literally changing your own. You're literally speaking to yourself because you don't have it all figured out. But the more you say it, the more you believe it. That's why they say, fake it until you make it. Because the more you say it, the more you say it, the more you believe it. Like, look, this is actually a possibility. So that's the journey I've started. And I believe um, down the road, five years from now, we'll go back to this conversation and see where we are. Where are we? And I think it will be, it will be amazing to see. No, I'm, I'm very confident it will be very, very different because... Um, <laughs> you know, having that, gaining the insight to give you that vision uh, yeah. is, it takes a lot of, uh, you'd say, cultivation. It's like you have to earn it. You have to get to the place where you can see. It's sort of like a mountain you have to climb. So you get to the top of it and then you can actually see. Without yeah. climbing up to the top of that mountain, you're you not going see. to see. <laughs> because you're, you're below. It's like there's, there's a certain yeah. level of experience you need to get to where you can uh, visualize that. And wow, you, you, you've touched on quite a few things there. Like when, when you're talking, that were coming up for me, I was even taking some notes. Uh, you touched on authorship, right? Like mm. it's sort of like you to, to become an author, like to, be, to, to have the authority, like, you know, to, to be an author in a certain place, like you, you, you need to be able to take the thing that, uh, is the same and then shape something new out of what is there. So it, it calls a lot of creativity from you. And the, the, the creativity is in seeing the same things that everybody is seeing, that everybody is calling them you then, and you see the mystery in it. And you're like, yeah, you, you may see it and you think it's that simple, but actually there's these other ways that it comes together that you haven't yet noticed. And I think that is how all the, the creative forces, um, or all the creative people have, have managed to reinvent everything that we, we, we're looking at. They, they look back into the past, into, into our current lives, and they see what it is that we're not using well yet, and re-optimize that to fit the current times. And I think part of that is, is what you're, you're talking about, the investment. It's like, yeah. to, to get the opportunity to do that, uh, you sort of like have to add more knowledge, right? Like more ways of knowing. You have to deepen your your knowing of these things because the like they said, the devil is in the details, right? It's like, yes, yeah, like once you get enough detail, that's when it starts to speak up. That's when you start yeah. to see the the limits of it and and how you can push them further. And uh, and and as you get closer to the limit, that's when you see the opportunities. They're not going to be where there's solid ground already. Like the solid ground is solid, but as you get closer to the edge, now you start the opportunities start opening up for you. And um, it's it's very true. Like you know, all the AI advancements are starting to make this a, a, a real challenge for us uh, because things that you would do uh, as a job. Uh, maybe let's say 10 years ago, and this was like a, a well-respected job in society, are now being, um, you know, you can, you have to work harder to make a reality that stands out from that thing. You have to be more creative. And of course, like when the, the inventors of the AI started out, this was what I think, this was one of the positive things they were hoping for. I'm not going to say all the others, but I think this was one of the positive outcomes they were hoping for that uh, they would uh, free up people's time so that people can cultivate their creativity and, you know, bring about new realities that we are not yet able to access since we are sort of like, we don't have the time and we're tied down 
with our resources in, in trying to make the current work. And so if you can automate a lot of things, then it frees up your time. Because as you mentioned there, like one of the things in your investment you're trying to probably do is is find the time. It's like your life hasn't stopped. Right? Like you still have to do your job, you still have a business yeah. to run, you still have yeah. you still have children to parent. Uh, like life still goes on, but there's all these other things that you also now need to do. It's like as you spin these 15 plates, you have to add like three without yeah. dropping the 15. <laughs> Very because true. Once the, because like once any of them drops, uh, then the whole thing may may wobble and the whole thing may yeah. fail because every every each one of them is important and. And I think the wisdom is in uh, having n- knowing exactly which optimal spot to be, so that you're able to to do all these things together at the same time. That's when you start to see uh, someone's wisdom, because the the people who who you you know like you, you do a lot of you deal a lot of with lead, with leaders. Uh, there's that uh, thing they call um, the the Pareto distribution. This guy did some research and says like. 80% of the work is done by the 20% of the people in the company. And you need to identify who those 20% are because if you keep those people and cultivate them and make them as productive as possible, like most of the work will be done because they, they will do the one thing that solves a big chunk. Yeah, and, very true. And, and, and you can even see that distribution like through life, like you, you hear about the, the top 1% who own like, you know, more than 50% of the wealth of the world. And those people, they are still living a 24-hour day, just like the rest of us, right? <laughs> you ask yourself, like a guy like Elon Musk, how is he running all these, you know, enterprises and still has like about, I don't know how many children and a family to take care of? And how is he alive, right? Like, if, I can't imagine if I had to do that, if I would still be alive. Like, what, how do you manage that? And I think, the, the the trick in in whatever he's doing is some very unique way that he has developed for himself to be able to balance all these things. It's like he's in this one spot where he can do so many things and have so much insight and reuse it to to help each of those things stay up and it's all well balanced. But all that comes through the cultivation that you're talking about, uh, the, the the training, upskilling, and and really, it's like you have to keep reinventing yourself. Like your 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 current version right now, uh, you now need to build your next version yeah. as you without stopping being this one and then add to yes. it. Yes. So it's it's very it's a very sophisticated challenge, um, and you know. Going back to to knowing yourself, right? Like, if you don't know that, then it it can be a problem to start because then you're going to try and do many things. Uh, we like to do this thing uh, a lot in Uganda, whereby you you you'll want to hire someone, right, and ask for their resume, and they'll give you their resume, and and, and then they'll tell you, look, I, I can do anything. It's like when you see their resume, it's like, what do you really do? It's like yeah, yes, whatever. You, you, Just give I, I'm me. willing. Yeah, you <laughs> give me. I'm willing, right? And and that is a, a good attitude to to come at doing things. However, you also need the competence. You need to know what you're not good at. Because if you say you can do everything, uh, another thing you're saying without saying it is that you don't know what you're terrible at. <laughs> and without knowing what you're terrible at you're going to end up doing the terrible as though it's a good thing, right? So if you if you introspect and, and you've been observing yourself, like learning to know yourself, then you would know the things that you're not good at. And so you can, you know, declare yourself and say, look, I am capable of learning many things, uh, here are the things which I know I really am good at. And, and I think... Mm-hmm. The good things are the ones that you enjoy doing, right? But there are also some things that if you give me those things, I will struggle. It's like, this is going yeah. to be a problem. So maybe don't make me do those things. Like if, if push comes to shove and, and that's the only thing I have to do, then I'll probably have to do it. Uh, but if I had to choose, 
that is not the thing that I would choose to do. Here is the set of things that I'm going to choose to do, and I'm and I'll brand myself as those things, which are sort of like shaping uh, the pursuit of your excellence. You know, the pursuit of your purpose. And and like you're talking there, like you've um, you started to identify what those things are and leaning against those skills and sort of knowing it's like, oh no, this is my happy place. Like when I am applying this skill set, uh, while it may look effortful for someone else, for me, it's less effort. You know, it sort of like yes. unlocks your flow and you, it, it could be something sophisticated, but in your experience of doing it, it, it's not that sophisticated. You, you, you ask someone like <laughs> a good example is uh, 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 like tying shoelaces, right? Like it's a very mm-hmm. low level skill, right? But you should test this on a child who doesn't know how to tie shoelaces and, and try to articulate how they should tie shoelaces. Then you can see how quickly that task becomes a, a very complex problem. And you're trying with words and language and everything and demonstration and it's like no and so it shows you like it takes a, it takes a certain level of skill to even know how to tie shoelaces and it takes a certain kind of patience and a lot of practice to embody the skill whereby it's like if, if i had to write a, you know an article explaining in a, the simplest way possible how to tie shoelaces i probably would write probably 2000 words but i may not even get to it but if I had to do it, it's just, come on, you just do this and this and this, and then the shoelaces are tied. Sure, sure. <laughs> but, but someone, for someone who can't do it, like, what do you mean? Like, if, if, if I'm not, if you blindfold me and I just have to listen to you and we see what comes out, I don't think it's going to be what you're describing. And, and, and you see that, that little example on, on LinkedIn where they yeah. line up these people and they have to draw the thing in succession. Yes, yes. The thing yes, that yes. comes out the other side is never the thing that started this side because everyone yeah. has a different way of interpreting. And when they interpret sure. it, they are using their own um, their own values, their own beliefs, their own skills, their own experiences. And those are always shaping us towards what we can see and what we should be doing. And I think uh, even if necessity pushes us to wanting to broaden what we're willing to do, we still have to be honest and acknowledge that we really can't do everything. There's only a a few things we can do. And if we actually invest in doing those things and learning more how those things work, and, you know, to to use a mystical language, like try to see the mystery in those things, then... It's, it's ever alive. It's like, uh, as a parent, like, you, you may notice this, like, somehow the, your children, you never notice the difference of how they look as they grow. To you, they mm-hmm. always look the same because, like, they're just your beautiful children. But when you look yeah. back at the pictures, you start to say, oh, wow, they, they look different here. They look, when you put the pictures side by side, you can tell the difference. But when they present themselves to you, you just see them because... You sort of like, you don't see what is presented to you. You see the spirit of the child because that's what you're always seeing. That's what you're always relating to. And so it's like the relationship has gone from the physical to, yes. you know, to the spiritual. But but we don't see this it's until until it confronts us. Like, it's like, you, if you use like maybe a photos application, it gives you a memory and it's like, oh, okay. This is how they actually look like two years ago. They yeah. look really different yeah. from how they always look. Yeah. Um, but I think that's how we need to see life. That's how we need uh, to sort of like see the, the ever-changing detail and uh, the mystical side of it, especially with the things that uh, we feel we are good at, the things that bring about our flow, the things that um, when we're doing those things, that's, that's we feel we are in the right place, you know. And it always feels like time time sort of like changes, like it like goes slower or it goes faster it's like time stops being a concern when you're doing those things and you want to do more and it's like even with all your responsibilities right you still find time right you're still able to create that's how you identify your purpose it's exciting whenever you're doing it it doesn't feel like work like it's it's amazing like even when you're sleeping 
your thought process is still working because you're thinking, so tomorrow I need to identify uh, what topic I need to talk about. What do I need to share? Who is going to read? It's in your mind. You're at a function, but you're on your phone trying to Google to understand how best can I do this? But it's, and I, I felt it when I said, let me take this venture seriously. Let me not just look at it as a dump, a dump thought process. Let me actually take it seriously. Now, every minute I am thinking, um, how can I be better? Uh, if I get a speaking engagement, how can I present myself? Uh, how many am I reaching? How are my socials looking like? Because for you to thrive in this world, people go back and do due diligence on you in the world that I want to invest in. So you have to go back and see that whatever you did five years back, you're like a politician. You're like a politician. People will dig it up. And, <laughs> and they say, oh, she was this, she was that. To ruin your reputation, to ruin your process, and one thing I've understood or what my mentor has been telling me, that not everyone will be excited about your growth. And this is what every person out there must understand. That people around you are not always happy for you. And God was nice to not to show us people's hearts, you know. He was very, very smart. And he's a very smart God. I, I, I love that God. He, he, made it, he made sure that he was the only one who knew <laughs> what you're thinking how you want to do it, even when you're seated with someone. You can't be there with someone, say they're discussing Clayton, and they are thinking, what is he talking about? But they're smiling with you. Who, who does he think he is? But they're smiling with you. Now, once you understand that not everyone is happy about your journey, and not everyone is on your journey, then you start focusing on you. You focus on you, you focus on your progress, you focus on how you do it. They will come on board five years from now, be like, hey, it was actually happening. It is happening for her. Despite the, the loopholes and the challenges and the gaps on the way, despite the naysayers who are saying, oh, no, she can't do it. Oh, no, 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 no. That podcast won't go anywhere. Wait for it. Just give it a year. They even give you a timeline. <laughs> they even give you a timeline and say, ah, give Clayton's podcast for a year and he will be out. The gas will be gone because that's what they're focusing on. That's what they hope happens. So what do you, how do you counter that? You must stay focused on the goal. Whether you have 10 views, whether you have 100 views, whether you have, it's okay. It's, it's in the consistency. And I'm beginning to believe in myself in that level that if I have 100 views, imagine they were in the room clapping for me. Those are many people. That's the angle I'm looking at it. I don't care if you have a million views and I have 100, it's okay. It's all in the journey. You started somewhere to get to your 100 million people, to get to your whichever level you are. It was a journey that you took from day one. And I don't think you started by 101 million people looking at you. No, it was a process. So allow me to enjoy my process. Allow me to start my process. And this process for me, you have to have the confidence to believe in yourself. Otherwise, you will get 100 claps and five claps will put you down. You will focus on the negative, but you forget that you had a hundred people clapping for you. And the five are the ones who are taking your attention. And the, it's, it's in humanity that we look for the negative. Who is saying the negative? Who is trying to bring me down? That's the one you focus on. Instead of focusing on the hundred people who are clapping for you and saying, go on, go, go on, you can do it. You forget those ones and you look at the other negative side. So for me, I am choosing on this journey to look on the positive. To look on the people who are saying, go on, you can do it. To look on the guys who are saying, we have a platform here. Come and use it. Come and be, come, come and share something. I am focusing on that. I'm not focusing on the ones who are saying, um, today your hairstyle is not looking good. So you start focusing on how you're looking like instead of the message. Instead of what you're trying to impact in the world. Because negative energy sells faster or moves faster. Our hormones and our body language will, will be seen by when someone says, um, today you're not smart. You will focus on that and forget that you have a bigger purpose. 
And so on this journey, and just like any other journey, and if there are any young people who are watching us, we have to start focusing on the positives, things that build us, because the negatives can be addressed in a minute. Saying you're not smart, you can dress up in a minute and you're smart. But investing in your knowledge, it's a process. It takes time. It takes energy. It takes investment. It takes taking some time away from your family, from your children to be able to give them that. But someone comes out of the blend, says something small and negative, and then you're off the rail. So I am choosing not to listen to that. I am choosing to block all that noise and saying, yes, my channel is growing at a slow rate, but it's okay. Four years from now, you will all come back for that content because you will need it. Simple, you will need it. And no one will force you to come for it. The circumstances around you will force you to look for it. Why? Because they say, if you don't change, change will change you without you wanting it to change. As simple as that, if the economy gets tougher, we have no time to waste anymore. We're going to look for content that is going to build us, that is going to turn us into productive people, that is going to help us stand out of the crowd. You will need to know that. No one will force you. You will just go on YouTube and say, how do I stand out of the crowd? And the content will come because you're looking for it. So at this stage, I have reached an age where I no longer care what people think about me, but I care about how much impact am I going to make in the world? How much work do I have to do to reach there? How much investment do I have to make to get to that level? And as young people, that is where we have to do, that's where we have to get if we're going to survive. Because the forces that are pulling you down are also quite many. So how you survive from that challenge is going to be very key, which calls what you're talking about, understanding your strengths and your weaknesses. And to do that, you need emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence requires self-awareness and self-assessment. And once you go through those stages of understanding who you are, understanding your weaknesses and your strengths, then you know where to invest most time. You know what to do at what time. And then having the capacity to make decisions. Decision making is a whole topic altogether. <laughs> because the decisions you make right now will determine what happens to you in the next one hour. Will, happen, will determine what happens to you in the next 20 years. So decision making is an art that most people take for granted. It's an art. And being able to understand that now I am at an age where I have to make decisions that are going to help me impact my children, impact my family, impact myself, impact my career growth, that is where we have reached. And possibly I would say, 20 years back, I mean, in my 20s, if I knew the things I know right now, I would be a billionaire. But it's also okay to go through that age, doing the things of that age, because if you don't do them, they will come for you at 40 years. You start behaving like a 20-year-old at 40. So every stage has its purpose. And you have to be intentional in understanding what you have to do at each stage. But our generation right now, we are focused on things that want to get us money quickly, things that are going to bypass systems. You want to reach somewhere. You don't want to go through the process because you're fearing to fail. But it is, in, it is from failure that you will pick lessons. And then you will fail again. And then you pick more lessons. You will fail again, again and again. At the end of the day, there'll be that one success that will make up for all the failures. And then they say, you fail, you fail, and then that one big success will make up for each and every failure that you went through. Then, um, Again and again and again. After that, again, you remove the A and then you stay with gain. You, again and again and again, you say, well, what's happening to me? I'm trying over and over. I'm trying over and over. 
But once you remove the A and you stay with a gain, that gain will be 10 times the gain that you are going through. So for me, I, I would just want to bring that impact into the young people, to inspire the young generation. And that's the journey I'm starting. I want to give myself to the world to make an impact. And in the process, I'm healing myself. So whatever I'm doing, literally, I'm doing it for me. Because the more I impact the world, the more I heal myself, the more I become knowledgeable, the more I grow. Because for me to put out a message out there, I have to research, I have to read, I have to do several things. I am making myself better as I try to help someone else. So, and for me, that is where my light comes in. My eyes shine. Like, I, I, I know this is my purpose. I know I love to speak. But now loving to speak is not enough. I have to do more to make that speaking more impactful, more transformational. Okay, after you've transformed people, you go to stage four. How do we build a community that loves to transform? You start having those sessions. You start having those group meetings. And before you know it, you're a household name that is transformational, but also adding value to the community. So for me, my eyes light up when I start to speak. And that's how I got to know that that is my purpose. And that's how I got to identify that despite every little thing I'm doing in the job sector, that's an illusion. It will go away at some point. I'm building someone else's dream. It's time to build my own. And it's time for people out there to build their own dreams. But you can use the process of building someone's dream to pick lessons to build your own. That's why for me, I love being employed. I love being in the employment sector. Like I told someone that for me, I love people to employ me. I love working for people. Why? Because I'm going to pick imaginable lessons. I'm going to pick so much that will help me drive my own dream. And when that time comes, then you can have a smooth transition because you have learned so much. You have grown so much. You have worked with people. You know how people behave. You know expectations. You know. So that when you start your own empire, my friends, you have all the knowledge you need to run that empire to the epitome. And so for me, that's the angle I'm taking. And I believe that uh, with God's guidance, with God's help, and with commitment, plus consistency, every young person out there who's going to watch this podcast must know that everything works with consistency and discipline. I think I'll get where I want to be. And I want, I'm going to note this down, that five years from now, I want to call Clayton and revisit this conversation and see where we are. And that's the journey I've yeah. started. <laughs> oh, that's great. Like, I'm really, really looking forward to that call. And, and you, you've touched quite on a number of things there. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, the, the one that's really sticking out for me is the destructions, you know, all the negativity, right? Like, you, you, the, the, these are destructions and, and they'll draw you away from your focus. Yeah. Like, for example, sure. the example you gave, it's like people will start talking about your hair, uh, you know, your dress, how you, you presented yourself. And, well, I guess, like, if you're a hair model, this should be important feedback. Like, you should pay attention to that, right? Like, sure. if, you're, if you're into fashion and this is all about fashion, like, it's a fashion context, yes, how you dress up really matters. But Very true. If, 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 it's, if they're giving you feedback about those things and this is about speaking, it's like they're missing the point. Like <laughs> They're really missing the point. I like to use that as, a, a, you know, the metaphor for, <laughs> I, I used it the, as a metaphor for, for sinning, you know. Uh, I had to teach my son about uh, sin in, in one of his uh, uh, courses at church. He had to learn uh, quite a few concepts before he could, be allowed to take communion and one of the concepts he had learned about was sinning and so i had to explain it to him in a way that made sense to him and i was telling him look don't think about it as you know doing something wrong it's not really just about doing something wrong it's a bit it's a bit different it's like 
a deliberate way of missing the point, right? Like that is that is worse than you should not be missing a point intentionally. So if you're trying to hit a target and you're missing it, that is essentially the description of what it means to sin. Now, you could do this intentionally. You may do it unintentionally. It doesn't matter. If you, if you don't hit the target, you have missed. So you've missed the point. So it's like the missing of the point is what you need to work against. Like always try to get the point. Try to be hitting your point. If you're hitting the point, then you're all good, right? And and sort of like that managed to get, to, to get him to get the idea. And I think like distractions draw us from hitting our targets. And they they lead us into places that we don't want to go. And And that's because, you know, this is something you hear people use the phrase of like, but you made me, or they made me. And, you know, they said all these things and I believed. And it's like, yeah, in saying that, but where, where were you? I say, <laughs> you, 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 know, you know, you allowed, you allowed them to make you, right? Yes. It's like, you, you listened to, to that. Like, what is it? The temptation. You got tempted by the destruction. You had uh, you had a job to you know protect your attention, right? And and it's, that job is becoming harder and harder, you know, with the, with the technology advancements and the AI, because now they know how to steal our attention. So they really work. They are working with a lot of psychologists and uh, really coming up with an optimal way of taking your attention and keeping it where exactly they want it to be, yeah. and. And you have to work harder to fight for your attention, to put it where you want it to be, which is, you know, all the investments you're talking about, right? And, you know, another thing that really uh, stood out for me in what you said was uh, the failure, right? Like the failure seems to be, um, you know, it teaches you what not to do. So it's not nothing. It's not yeah. you know, like, it, of course, comes with a lot of negative emotion, which is understood but the purpose, you know, the point of it is to show you what doesn't work. And before you can know what works and what works consistently, you need to know a lot of what doesn't work. And you, you see this, like if you're training a child, teaching them a new skill, they'll ask all these questions, you know, but why do you do it that way? Why can't I do this? It's like, well, you try it and see. They, they use the example of like the child touching a fire or something hot. It's like, yeah, we don't touch fire. Why? Because it burns and it hurts. Uh, it's like, really? It's like, well, you can try. <laughs> and they would touch yeah. and, and they would feel the pain. And the pain will tell them in a concrete way that, yeah, you keep doing this. This does not end well for you. Uh, but I think there are certain things in life which uh, don't give such immediate feedback, right? Like they're a bit broader. And the, the feedback comes after five years, <laughs> right? So, yeah. So in the, you need to find a way to fail fast. Um, I, I work in technology, and when one way when we build software, there's uh, uh, there's what they call failing fast. Like really, you have to figure out the points of failure as fast as you can, so that you can know which parts work. Uh, it's like the faster you understand what doesn't work, then the less you 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 spend time on working in that way. And so I think we need to steal some of those techniques and apply them as well, because every point at which you fail, that shows you where you don't need to pursue anymore. It's like, oh, that's not the direction. And the moment when, when, it, when you find the one that works, partly it's because you learned all these things that did not work. And now the reason it's going to explode and compound and, and blow up in such a positive way is because you know where to go. You know where to go because you know where not to go. Yeah. And uh, by knowing where not to go, it tells you where you should be staying. I, I, I use this uh, example of the blind person, right? Like when they use their, their white cane walking, right? We think like it's telling them exactly where they should go. But the way it actually works is giving them the edge. It's like, Oh, there's an edge there, so don't go that side. Or there's an edge this side, don't go that side. So if I keep, you know, following the edges, then I know where the space is, where I should be. 
And all sure. these failures are sort of showing us where those edges are so that we can know what, where the path is. Because the path is not going to tell us. Like if you ask anyone, <laughs> you know, what is it that you want? They'll tell you everything they don't want. It's like, oh, no, but I'm not like that. What do you want to eat? I, they know exactly what they don't want to eat. Maybe in some cases, appetite yeah. can really drive you towards the thing that you want. Uh, but for things, for things which require inspiration, uh, it's like, you know, th- that thing where they, you, you, they'll tell you in school, you know, what do you want to be doing from 10 years from now? What's your dream job? And you're like, okay, that's a big problem. I know everything that I don't want to do for a job. Uh, but I also don't want to limit myself, right? Like, <laughs> like I still want it to be open. So what is that thing that always stays open? And I think yeah. all this work you're doing, you know, it drives you towards that. It has to be something much deeper within you, which you are saying before, like it's, it's driven by your values. It's aligned with your purpose. Uh, it, it keeps guiding you, giving you the precision of mm-hmm. where you should stop, where you should turn. Oh, it's like, okay, now I need to ignore this. Now I need to focus on this. And, and one other thing you touched on was, you know, get, getting, putting yourself in a situation where you're always getting that feedback. Because you have your goal. You know where you're going. You know how to get there. And so you can also choose a, a way to gain this feedback and what part of yourself you're going to use to do that. And so in the process, again, you, 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 you touched on this as well, like you have to curate the audience around you, like the people, who are your people? Who, who are the people you share this journey with? Uh, yeah. If you have people in there who shouldn't be there, they will lead to destructions and they'll, they'll drive you off what you need to go. So you need, you need people who... Uh, are supportive of this, people who you're going to learn from in this, people who uh, are going to hold the space for this reality that you're creating so that it can come true. And if you, that also means like these people you have to stay away from. <laughs> Very <laughs> true. That, that's yeah. what they say. I mean, if you, if you want to be at the top, it is lonely. It is lonely. And there are things you have to pluck off. There are things you have to let go. And if it means you have to let go of some friends, uh, some acquaintances, then you have to, because um, you have to get uncomfortable for you to be comfortable in the later stage. And for me, that's what I'm looking at. And, and I believe that when you start getting comfortable, those people can actually come back because people like comfort. So you have to take the, the sacrifice and the chances right now because no one is coming. And that's what I always tell everyone around me, that no one is coming. Not even your family will come to rescue you when things get tough. Yes, they will listen, but they may not give you exactly what you need. So you have to think about yourself. So, and that's where the support system comes in. You need a support system. And the first support system is your family. If your partner is not on board with what you're doing, it's going to be very difficult. If your children are not understand that mommy now has to work, because you have to keep telling them, mommy now has to work, daddy has to work, uh, I have to go and do this then you are going to find your priorities clashing. And at the end of the day, you will lose out on both areas. You will lose your family, and then you find that you're not performing at your job because the family unit informs how you're able to achieve on this side. As simple as that. And that's what I always tell leaders. For you to outperform yourself in your professional career, your family unit has to be intact. Because for any chaos that goes into your family will affect how you, how you become productive on the other side of the coin. So it's, it's all a balanced game. And I think this conversation for me, I'm also learning so much from it. It's, it's, it is showing me that there's so much to be done. Saying and speaking is one element, but putting in the work, you, no one is going to do it for you. Even if you hire a, a, a PA, even if you hire a team around you, they'll be asking you, so what do we do? So you, the person who has started up this idea, whether it is a, it is, it's a bakery, whether you want to bake, whether you want to do a, um, a retail shop, you have to think and work on your feet because the people that you're going to hire will be looking at your leadership. They'll be looking at your leadership. So if you're not knowledgeable enough, 
to answer those questions. If you don't have the experience of how you can manage people, the conflict resolution, all those things will happen. But how prepared and how equipped are you to do that? And that's what you are saying that uh, you have no idea how Elon Musk is doing all these things and he's still achieving. CEOs or big business uh, men at the top don't actually do, do the dirty work. They don't. They hire experts who do the work and feed them with information. What they need is an act of decision making. Because all this information will come to your table. The question is how you make the decisions. Because that decision you make can break your brand or can elevate it. That's where good, good leadership comes in. Decision making is a key element of a good leader. <laughs> or yeah. anyone, even in the family unit, the decisions you make in your family will determine whether your children respect you or not. Will determine so many things. So all this work is done by so many other people that you hire as experts who bring it to your table because their job is done when they bring it to you. Now you, your job is to see through and see are these actually opportunities? Are these actually going to add value to my brand or to my business? Or are they going to bring it down? And if it's value, how much value? Now that's where the knowledge comes in. Understanding the leaps of the economy, understanding that what is happening with the dollar rate or whichever money it is, understanding the business, the industry you're in, so that when those decisions, when you when the time comes and you have to make the decision, you are making an informed decision. So that it propels you to the next stage. So that you can create an authority in your business around you, people around you, like he's a good decision maker. Whatever he touches turns into gold because that is your job. The second job of a leader or anyone who wants to be in that process is to have a vision. What is your vision for your brand? What's your vision for your family? What's the vision for what you want to achieve in 20 years from now? Those are two main jobs of a leader. Have a vision and make decisions because everything else will be done for you and it will come to your table. But those two things will allow you make or propel your business to the next level. Now, I want to use the knowledge that I know around those things to build my brand. Right now, I will tell you my brand's at zero. I think it's at zero. I, um, yes, I could be known because of the work that I was doing in the, in the country and all that, yes. But as an Adele brand, it's at zero. So I'm going to start building afresh. So when you are building, you have not to rely on what you have, you know, the, the, the branches you set up before. You build as if you have nothing. You build as if you have nothing. And then that gives you the capacity to think. But if you build, you think you know it all, you'll fail tomorrow because you don't, because you don't. So, and that's the, that's the journey that young people, even us who are here speaking to each other, we have to start thinking from that uh, perspective, build strong roots so that when the, the, the stem comes up, it is strong enough to hold, you know, the roots are holding that even if they cut the stem, the roots are still solid. They will sprout more afresh because the challenges are going to be there. They will cut us short. The finances, uh, so many things. You want to invest in yourself at your time, the finances, because all these things cost money. <laughs> they do cost money and time. You want to do it, but you don't have the resources to do it. Then what? Creativity, innovation, so many things start coming and you start thinking. So it is that journey that makes everything exciting. The uncertainty of it makes it exciting. Gives you the motivation to wake up and go and sit on your desk and start your podcast because you don't know how, where tomorrow it will be. But you will never know unless you start. So I am starting. You're starting. So we have to tell the audience as well to start because you will never know how productive whatever you're doing will be unless you start. If you keep saying, uh -huh, I will fail, can I even do that? You're already telling yourself in your mind that you're not capable enough. But even then, you will never know 
the capacity that you have. You will never know the energy you have until you conquer that fear and get into the world and get it done. And so I'm conquering my fears now. I am conquering my fears. I'm conquering the perceptions that will come. I will try. I will die trying. I can tell you, I will die trying to build this brand. I will die trying. So, and and that's the perception to... of a winner. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I'm in complete agreement with that. You have to die trying. And I think uh, the other thing maybe I could add to that is like you have to do it afraid. I, I still, I'm stealing this quote from a friend who I was talking to. It's like they, they asked, uh, I think, someone and uh, about something they were doing and they asked them if they were afraid, like, you know, how is it they were, they did not look like they were afraid to do it. And, and the person replied and said, no, no, I actually did it, but I, I was scared the whole time. Like I was so afraid of all the things that could go wrong because I could feel them. They were alive for me. Yeah. And, and, and so like the resilience you need is to be able to do things while you're afraid. It's like you get that fear behind you so that it pushes you. That towards. fear is a motivation. Yeah, the, the fear <laughs> is the motivation that gets you yes. there. And and so, yeah, it's like it's, it's important. And and part of that is in exactly what you're saying, making the decisions, honing your decision-making skill. It's like that is a skill in itself that you have to cultivate. And and still, it still goes back. It has to be mostly aligned with your values, your, your beliefs and, and everything, with your way of doing things. And... You, you you have a certain, you'd say, unique nature about you that will tell you what that is. And so having confidence in that and trusting in yourself, all that pushes you in the direction of what you're cultivating and what, what it is that you want to build. And so I commend you for starting and, and wanting to continue that journey. And yeah, uh, it's encouraging. Like I'm also encouraged because I'm also just starting. So, so it's very, very <laughs> encouraging. So Thank you for that. And uh, I think we've, we've been talking for a while now. And I think maybe yeah. uh, at this point, I, I want to invite you to, you know, share a few more uh, final words, final comments, talk about maybe some of the things that you want people to, uh, you know, check out uh, uh, some of your projects, and then we can bring it to a close. Um, thank you so much, first of all, for hosting me. I'm, I'm, I'm delighted. I'm honored. And um, it's, it's a privilege. I don't take anything for granted. And, and for me, I think if anyone takes nothing from this podcast, it is to say, please start. Whatever you want to do, first of all, research, read, be knowledgeable about it because you're planning to be an authority on it. Invest in yourself where you can because personal investment is the best thing you can ever do for yourself because you always fit into any environment. People will not have a conversation and you can't fit in because you want to be an exceptional authority in the field you're choosing to be in. So invest in yourself. But most importantly, and what works best is be confident. Be confident in what you're doing. Believe it so people around you can believe it. Because if you don't believe in it, no one else will believe in it. Because you are on your own. No one is coming to help you. So for me, if, no, if anyone takes nothing from this conversation of which we saw so many beautiful things, it is the fact that whatever you want to do, identify it, believe in it, invest in it, and start. As simple as that. I am just starting. That's a fact. But I want to make a commitment to myself that five years from now, I will look back and say, I started and this is where I am and I'm still going strong. And I think for every young person that is listening and watching, that's the message they need to take. That you start, you have to assess yourself as well, to do a self-evaluation, to make sure that you reach where you want to reach. And when you fail, don't stay down, stand up again, dust your shoes, try again, try again, again and again. And before you know it, you'll have the game. And for me, that is where I put myself that I'll keep trying. I'll keep trying. I'll keep putting my brand out there. And before you know it, I'll hit what I, milestones that I want to hit because consistency, persistence, and discipline yields results. And that's the journey I'm starting. And I believe that um, most of our watching 
will be inspired to start as well. Um, anyone who wants to know what I do, um, you can go to my YouTube channel, Candid Talk with Adele. We say it as is. If you get offended, it's because you want to change that thing that has offended you. As simple as that. We get offended by things that are actually affecting us because we don't want someone to, to raise them up. So we are honest about every conversation. Um, you can go to my socials at Adele AGB, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Facebook, um, you'll be able to see what I do, but also I'm building a website uh, to, show my, uh, to show what I'm doing. And as a leadership and life coach, I want to impact so many lives. So I am building something that I believe most people can actually build as well. Alongside my other career of a lawyer and a human resource practitioner, I want to be known by something else that I love, and that's my passion. Wow, it's been wonderful hosting you, Adele, and I will link all those uh, projects in the show notes. And thank, thank you so you. much for talking to me, and I hope we can have some more conversations in the future. Thank you too for having me. I hope it has been impactful for all those that will be watching. Thank you.